Welcome back. In the last video, we just finished making our block type, which will be the foundation for our tetromino pieces. Let's start off by creating a new module called tetromino. So I'm going to go ahead and do tetromino.elm. And I'm going to start off by saying module tetromino where. And I'm going to go ahead and copy over um, most, or in fact, all of the imports from the last file. So here we are. I'm going to go ahead and copy these over, paste them in here. But I'm also going to import block because we're going to want access to the blocks. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and, and not expose or qualify anything with that one. And I also am going to import list because I'm going to be using things from the list library as well. Okay, let's get started by specifying a type alias, tetromino, tetromino, and it's going to be a record. It is going to have a shape. I'm going to say the shape is a list of location. Uh, that's another record I'm going to have to define. So I'm going to define a type alias location, and location is going to be a pair of integer values that specify the row and column in which the uh, a particular uh, the, the shape basically is a list of rows and columns which it occupies. In addition to this, let's go ahead and add in the block. This is going to be the block which actually takes up all of those spaces. And so now we have this nice tetromino uh, value here. If we hop over to our Elm reactor, we'll go back to the uh, root directory, and you'll see that we have a tetromino.elm now. Go ahead and open that up. And I have an error saying that block, the type block, is not defined. Um, and that's because I didn't import block exposing it. So I'm going to go ahead and expose the block type. And let's refresh. All right, no compilation errors. And just like before, let's go ahead and write a toForm function. So toForm is going to be take a tetromino, and it's going to produce a form. All right, so we have our toForm here. And so we have our tetromino. And Something that you can do in Elm that is kind of cool is you can pattern match on that record type. So rather than putting tetromino here, I'm going to want access to the shapes and the block. I know that, so I'm going to go ahead and do shape here, comma block. And so now I'll be able to access those without having to do tetromino.shape and tetromino.block. I can just access them directly. And what we want to do is we want to create a form. For each one of, we want to have the form basically be a block, and then we want to put that in all of the different positions uh, in our location list. So we already have a function that can turn our blocks to a form. So I'm going to call block.toForm and give it the block I want, uh, the block there. And then I need to basically create a spot for each one of these things to be placed. So Right now I'm getting just a single block, whereas I want to basically duplicate this block in every place in our shape list. So I'm going to write a function to help us do this. I'm going to write a function called translate. And translate is going to take a row and a column. Uh, in fact, it's going to take a location, and it's going to move our form to that location. And I'm going to use, in collage, there's a function called move. And move takes an x and a y value where you want to move something, and then it takes the shape, or sorry, the form you want to move. So I'm going to translate x, y, form in. We're going to fill in that x, y in just a minute. And then that is going, uh, sorry, not in yet. Um, and then we need to have all of our forms uh, for each location in our shape we want to apply this. So I'm going to use a function called list.map 
And what map does is it takes a function, in our case, translate, and it applies it to everything in a list. And so we have this shape. Shape is a list of locations. And translate is going to move all of those locations for us to a particular spot. So it's going to take all of those, sh those locations, fill it in row column, and then we're going to move form to that location for each thing in our map, or sorry, in our shape. And then we are going to group them together and have a single form that we can return. Okay. So now let's think about where our X and Y need to be. So we have a row. Our row is our up and down. So row is associated with Y. So we want this to go here, row, and we want column to be our left and y, our x-axis, um, and we need to translate these uh, by our block size. All right, so we have row times block size, and it would be great if we could do this. One thing that we need to remember is that our row and column our location have integer values. So what we need to do is actually convert these to floats. Remember our block dot size is a float and our move function takes a float. So we need to go call to float. This is a function in basics on each of these. So we're going to convert these to floats and then multiply them. Let's go ahead and refresh here. And we can't find block size. I missed a dot there. We'll go ahead and save and refresh. And it's very happy with us. Alright, so let's create a main function again. So main is going to be an element. So when I set main, uh, again we're going to do a clause. Let's go with 400 by 400. And then we have to call to form on a tetromino. So let's go ahead and create one. Let's create a tetromino. Um, and in fact, I want to create the I piece. So tetromino equals, and so we need to specify what shape is going to be equal to, and we also need to specify the block. The block is the easy one. We've constructed these before. So I'm going to go with block color, and I'm going to go with light blue. This is a fairly standard color for the I piece. And now we have to define the shape. And the shape is a list. So I'm going to go and use the square brackets to start that off. And I'm going to start with uh, at 1, 0. And then because I'm a visual person, I'm going to go ahead and uh, go down. And so remember, uh, the left side is our row. So this is our up and down axis. Negative 1, 0 and negative two, zero. All right, so now we have the tetromino and we have the I piece. Let's refresh here, see how we did. And there we go. We have this really nice looking I piece. So I'm going to rename this to I. So in later modules, we'll be able to access it by doing tetromino.i. I'll go ahead and re-indent that step there. And let me make another tetromino. I'm going to go with the J piece. We'll start off with the shape um, and the block that I want to fill this up with. I want it to be, um, let's go with uh, just a regular blue. This will be a dark blue color. And so let's create a shape. Um, and so we're going to do a J piece here. So I'm going to start at 1, 0 like that and then we're going to go down to zero zero and then we're going to go to negative one zero and then finally uh, we also need to add in the other part here it's going to be negative one negative one I'm going to indent this stuff just to look cool so that way I can see sort of in the text what it's going to look like and now I need to have a value called tetromino still. So I'm going to say tetromino 
is equal to J. So Tetromino is an alias for J at this point. And let's refresh. I'm missing a comma um, right here. So just for consistency, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Save. And we'll refresh. And there we go. We have a J piece. Excellent. There's a couple more pieces to do, but uh, we'll take care of those in the next video. We also want to create some helper functions for various things that we're going to want to do with tetrominoes. In the next video, we're going to write the rotate function which will rotate the tetromino uh, around some sort of pivot point.